In this video, I discuss a little bit of the concept underlying random effects model. Later in the next video, I give an example of how to run the model, interpret the results, and compare them to those of fixed effects model. Random effects model is also referred to as air components model, and that's because it, inc it includes the cross-section firm-specific air component omega within the composite air term V, instead of in the dummy variables, as is the case in fixed effects model. To see how this works, consider this panel model with two independent variables. Instead of treating the intercept term beta sub zero i as fixed, we assume it to be a random variable with mean beta sub zero common to all firms and the subject specific random error term omega. And the motivation for this approach is the realization that use of dummy variables in fixed effects model to explain heterogeneity is in fact a representation of our lack of knowledge of what the true model really is. And so what we're doing in random effects model is to express that lack of knowledge or ignorance, if you like, using the disturbance term V. So by replacing the firm specific intercept beta sub zero i with uh, these two terms right here, we end up with a construct that essentially says that the firms we're analyzing is a random sample from a much larger population of similar firms and they all have a common intercept equal to beta sub zero. And so the firm specific error term omega measures the random deviation of each firm's intercept from that common intercept. So how do we determine which panel data model is then appropriate? Well, first off, it's important to remember that the focus is on omega and how it relates to the independent variables. If we believe that the covariance between the two is non-zero, then we use fixed effects model in order to explicitly account for heterogeneity because using pooled OLS in such cases would uh, result in parameter estimates that are biased and inconsistent. So you might guess that pooled OLS may be appropriate if we assume covariance to be zero between firm specific error term and the regressors. And when can we assume it to be zero? One is if we believe that all or most of the independent variables believed to influence the dependent variable y have been clearly specified, which, as you would agree, could be a tall order. Or, if we believe that the heterogeneity effect omega is rel relatively small. But suppose we believe that covariance between the firm error term and the regressor is zero. In this case, using pooled OLS may be okay. However, we might run into the problem of zero correlation, which occurs when errors in a given ta time period carry over into subsequent periods. And to see how this works, consider again this panel data model, where this error term is, uh, is a component of these two terms right here. Now, to examine the condition for zero correlation, as I write here, we can expand the covariance between error terms in two time periods, color coding them to be the blue time period and the red time period, expanded in this manner. And notice that even if these covariates here all amount to zero, in other words, even if individual error components are neither correlated with each other nor autocorrelated across both cross-section and time periods, which is what I've represented here, we can't be certain that covariance between the blue omega term here and the red omega ta uh, term here in the two different time periods is zero. Notice that covariance between a variable and itself is variance. And so we can't be sure that variance of the firm specific error term is zero, which typically, as you know, variance is positive. So as you can see, even if the covariance between the firm specific error term 
and the regressor is zero, estimating with pooled OLS may result in serially correlated errors, the reason being that the variance of omega may be non-zero. To the rescue is random effects. Because the random effects model result tries to resolve this problem using generalized least squares estimation approach and the feasible GLS approach used here is one that seeks to identify the degree to which serial correlation is a problem and then uses some weighted estimation to fix it and to see how that works now down to this mean corrected within group fixed effects estimator that we worked with previously we construct the random effects GLS transform equation by multiplying the means in this model by the GLS parameter lambda. In this form, the random effects model would be said to be a quasi d mean model, and that's because the means are weighted by the GLS parameter lambda, which, by the way, ranges from 0 to 1. If lambda is 0, then as you can see, this random effects model will default to pooled OLS. It'll look like this, because if you multiply the means by 0, it's going to come down to this. And if lambda is 1, then the random effects model estimator will default to fixed effects model. If you multiply the means, you can see right here, by 1, it's going to come down to this, which is said to be fully demeaned. But if lambda is between 0 and 1, then random effects estimator is neither going to be equal to pooled OLS nor fixed effects estimator. And by the way, this is the definition of lambda. And so, as you can see, lambda would be 0 if the variance of the firm specific error term is 0. And that's when random effects estimator defaults to pooled OLS. And you can see it right here, because the variance here of omega is 0 multiplied by t, the time periods would be 0. And so we're going to be left with the variance of the idiosyncratic term divided by itself, which is 1, square root of which is still 1, my, from 1 is 0. If, on the other hand, variance of the firm specific error term is such a large number when multiplied by the time periods, then we're going to have a denominator that as it approaches infinity will cause this quotient here to be pretty much zero. One minus zero is going to be one. And that's when random effects estimator will default to the fixed effects estimator. So as you can see, random effects model is only appropriate when lambda ranges between 0 and 1. And that is when the variance of the firm specific error term is non-zero, but not so large as to necessitate the use of fixed effects model.